Please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the words of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to receive the prayers of thy people who call upon thee and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter, the 10th verse. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish what I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and come back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsibly Psalm 65. Thou, O God, art praised in Zion, and unto thee shall be the vow performed in Jerusalem. My misdeeds prevail against me. O be thou merciful unto my sins. Thou shalt show us wonderful things in thy righteousness, O God of our salvation. Thou that art the hope of all the ends of the earth and of them that remain in the broad sea. Who stilleth the raging of the sea and the noise of his waves and the madness of his, the people.
thou visitest the earth and blessed is, and makes it very plenteous. Thou waterest her pharaohs, thou sendest rain into the little valleys thereof. Thou makest it soft with the drops of rain, and blessed it in the increase of it. They shall drop unto, upon the dwellings of the wilderness, and the little hills shall rejoice on every side. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, the eighth chapter, the first verse. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of the life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to dwell, deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. For those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Go ahead, go. The Gospel Hymn. Page 679 in your, in your hymn books. We should be ready to go. Hit it.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Jesus went out and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. There must be something special happening for all you to come here when it's 118 degrees inside. Whew. I think I said the same thing last week. It's hot. I, uh, I have started a project that some of you know about. I have shown it to some of you. Um, I officially have started a farm. Um, I, I, I started my farm about a month ago. Um, I'm very proud of it. It's called Padre's Pepper Palace. I have um, basil. I have uh, oregano. I have dill. I have spearmint, by the way, which will really grow itself. I have five pepper plants. I have 12, I have 12 jalapeno plants that I've just started, and I have five tomato plants. My tomato plants, when I got them, were about this big. They were a gift. And now they are about this, okay, about this big. And some of them have tomatoes on them. How about that? Having lived in Ohio for 20 years, I knew I had to be a farmer, so I thought I'd come and farm here in Rhode Island. And I can tell you that it is not easy I have gone to people and I've said, what are these bugs that are everywhere? And how come I got a leaf that's ripped in half? And I planted this stuff and it's not working, but this spearmint, it is growing like crazy. I got to get rid of it. 
How do I do this? How do I care? How much water do I give it? Is rainwater better than hose water? Yes, it is. What kind of food? Somebody said, make sure you feed them. Feed them what? I'm trying to eat it. How do I feed it? There's a lot to do with growth and growing something from seeds. One of the big programs in rural Ohio and a lot of other places is the Future Farmers of America. Last year, a young man named Peter Bliss of Merced, California, was honored for his 417-acre farm, almost as big as the one we have at the rectory. He grew cotton, he grew almonds, he grew wheat, and when he started, he only had 30 acres that he received from his grandfather. Here's what he said when he won the award. He said, right when the time came to win it, he said later, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. You get on stage in the stadium, you got big old spotlights shining on you, and that's when I was like, holy cow. And when they called my name, I was like, wow. Kind of sounds like Scooby-Doo. Non-farmers sometimes romance the idea of farming life. Non-farmers think, wow, what would be great to live off the land and care for your own property and be responsible for all those things and watch life grow from the earth. But the fact of the matter is there's a lot of work involved. Fields need to be plowed, crops have to be sown, and irrigation pipes need to be put in. The farmer is always at the mercy of nature. A hailstorm can ruin an entire crop. And if the crops survive disease, pestilence, drought, and natural disaster, there's only a small window you have to actually harvest, right? And then there's the animals. You got to medicate them, you got to treat them, you got to care for them. It is hard work. They used to have a saying in Ohio that said, if mud's not flying, you're not trying. Despite the long hours and arduous work, most farmers never leave the farm. They're up at it in the morning and they are caring for it until the night and during the night they're thinking about it. The fact of the matter is, like us, success is not built in a day. And much like the farmer, our work is never done. There's always something that needs to be fixed. Reaping a harvest doesn't just happen. We have issues of discontent, self-worth, financial insecurity, illness, bad habits that spring up like weeds in the field. Then we look at relationships that need cultivation, watering, and harvesting. The work is never done. It's likely that the people that gathered around Jesus when he was telling the story of this parable were probably farmers. They were all from Galilee, and 90% of the people in the ancient world earned their living by working the land, and Galilee was no exception. When Jesus spoke to the people, as we know from the parables, he always told stories. Jesus always told stories so people could relate. Some of them were actually funny. Jesus likes us to laugh. And when he spoke on this story, he had probably seen a farmer who was doing something with barley and all the other crops like wheat and olives and grapes and all the things that they grew there. And Jesus, even though he was a carpenter, knew about farming. Jesus gives a lesson about what we are most challenged with. The ability to manage life, production, managing production and completing the task, or sowing, growing, and mowing. Think about that. Remember that today. Sowing, growing, and mowing. And then Jesus tells us about the different kinds of ground, right? He says, here's the first one is this rocky ground. And in his demonstrations of the different types of ground, he is identifying our skill set, what we know how to do and what we're good at and what we need to work on. The seed is given, but some of us are like paths, some of us are like rocky ground, and some of us, well, we just know how that goes. For Jesus, 
There's no greater work of production than taking care of the seed of God's word. It's hard to do. Some of us fall on a path. Some fall on rocky ground. Some land on a briar patch. And some actually hit on good, fertile soil. Here's what Jesus said. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprung up quickly. Since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. The problem with rocky Christians, they tend to be prone to attention deficit. Right? Upon reading, reading, receiving the word, they're happy and they're excited. They can't wait to be engaged. This is amazing. I can't wait to do this. And then you never see him again. What happened? I love Jesus. I love going to church. I love doing the things. Ah, but I got something to do next week. I love God. I can't do that. No, nope, can't do that. Because the seed of God's word is kind of just laying under there. It hasn't really taken root yet. The attention kind of wanders and we get distracted by so many different things and life is distracting. We get distracted by everything around us that is causing our focus to lose its attention to God. And the second one is they can't take the heat, so what do they do? They get out of the kitchen because Jesus talks about when the sun rose, they were scorched. If some people have the choice to defend God's word or run, gone, right? The third problem is that rocky Christians are unable to put down roots that will anger them in tough times. I learned that in order for something to really grow healthy, they have to have roots. They have to go deep. And they go deep into the earth and the water and the sun warms it and, and gives it strength to grow. And as Christians, we need to be the same way. Let your roots get down in the dirt so that God can nourish you, so that you can grow strong and produce fruit and be able to grow and be healthy. The good news is that we can clean up the rocky soil in our lives. God can remove the stones and the rocks that are blocking us from growing. You need a rototiller, a shovel, Whatever you got to do to get rid of what's blocking you from growing in your faith. What is keeping you from loving Jesus more? What is keeping you from growing as a Christian who also is able to plant seed? Who is also able to grow and nurture and cause others to have an experience with Jesus? This is our call as disciples. Remember the kid that won the State Farm Award? He's a fifth generation farmer. He said, I definitely am going to farm for the rest of my life. I was about six years old when I told myself I was going to farm, and that's what I've been doing ever since. Why is that important? And I'm done, promise. I always say that. I don't always mean it. But I am. This thing of being a Christian is about going the course it's about relationships. And what we're doing today is really, really important. Now, this is me just being your pastor. Fasten your seatbelts, Joan. We have three children who are being baptized today. Two of them are right here. What's up, Gabe? You good? Hi. Right. And we always talk about the baptismal covenant. Oh, they're making the promises. The godparents. Godparents, you're making promises. Big deal. Where's Emma? Oh, Lou, precious. We're making promises. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Get ready for this one. You're making a promise, too. When we read the baptismal covenant together, 
we are all making a promise to be in community and relationship. You know what should never happen is, well, whatever happened to, I don't know. Have you asked them? Have we reached out in relationship? Do we know each other as a community of faith together to be one body, right? As we said this morning, are we truly one body, one Lord, called to one purpose to be the body of Jesus Christ in this broken world around us? When you see the brokenness and you feel depressed and your roots are kind of struggling on the rocky ground, my friends, there is joy and hope and it starts right here. You should say amen to that. When you think life is challenging and difficult and God, we don't know where God is, this is where God is. God is here when children are coming to be brought into the body of Christ and we should receive joy and hope because they are present here to receive the sacrament that never goes away. In a few short minutes, I'm going to mark them as Christ's own for today. No, sir. As Christ's own for a month. No, sir. They will be marked as Christ's own forever. Forever. That soil is planted. It's there. And it's rich with nutrients. It's rich with all the things for them to grow. And guess what part of that plant food is? You and I are plant food. And we are to feed them and to nurture them and to allow them to grow into all that God made them to be. I'm going off notes, sorry. <laughs> Liz says we love it. So think about how you are going to be part of nurturing these children. Their parents being part of this community. It's not just checking a box of us, they were baptized. It's we are entering into relationship and covenant together. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, if parents and godparents bring your bulletins back to the baptismal font with you, we're going to do this now. And if you want to get a better view and come back to the baptismal font, you are welcome to. If your children want to come back and see how this all goes, come on back. Hey, how are you? Hey, Blue. That's perfect. Perfect. This is, come on closer, guys. Bring those children right up here so I can, so I can baptize them. <laughs> Where's Gabe and Alessandra? All right. Everybody close enough? Okay. Beloved in the Lord, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to witness the sacrament of holy baptism, by which these persons are to be made members of Christ's body, the Church. By the working of this holy sacrament, ordained by Christ Himself, these persons will die to sin and be raised to newness of life, receiving the fullness of God's grace that they may faithfully serve him all the days of their lives. Who presents these children for baptism? I present Emma Ray Randolph to receive the sacrament of baptism. <laughs> I present. I present Gabriel Steven and Alessandro Steven to receive the sacrament. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will look at 
Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the future stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creature of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Church, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these people in their life in Christ? Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? I will, will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent? and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for these persons who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send them into the world in witness of your love. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection, and through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Name this child. Where's my... Do you want to just kind of step up here? Just kind of turn over this way. There you go. Emma Ray Randolph. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. Forgave us? Hey, Gabe. Hi. Can I baptize you now? Name this child. Gabriel Storm Stevens. Okay. Well, kind of, there you go. Okay. This is, this is going to, okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Gabriel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, we've got cards going everywhere. Can I have the card, please? The card. The card. Thank you. Name this child. Alessandra Sage Stevens. Alessandra Sage. She's sleeping. That's okay. I got her. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You guys need towels? <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, we have bestowed upon these, your servants, the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, in the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Emma? Come on up. Last time I knew the whole thing over. Emma May, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. All right, Gabriel. Hi. How are you? How's that smell? Does that smell good? Yeah? Gabriel, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever and ever. Amen. Elisan? Hey, precious. Alessandra? You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hold those with the other hand. 
Okay, take it. Thank you. Emma, receive the light of Christ. Oh. Oh. Gabriel, receive the light of Christ. Oh, he said, thank you. <laughs> Alessandra, receive the light of Christ. Let your light so shine before the world that all may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. His resurrection and share with us of his eternal peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Greet each other and welcome the newly baptized. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Good to see you. Oh, you too. How are you? Congratulations. 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 Just take a picture with us? Yeah, after Mass, we'll take some Absolutely. pictures. Okay. okay good. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. I bet you. <laughs> All right, let's go back to our seats so we can get out of here. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. It's real hot. The holy sacrifice of this Mass <clears throat> is offered to the greater glory of God in thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, including those for whom we offer our thanksgivings now, silently or aloud. For those celebrating birthdays this week, Luke, Tony, Anne, Reverend Laurel Phelps, Sierra, and all those for whom we offer our thanksgivings now, silently or aloud. For all those celebrating anniversary this week, especially Scott and Kelly and Reverend Michael and Carol, we offer thanksgivings now silently or aloud. We remember those for whom our prayers have been asked, especially those on the parish prayer list, and for all those for whom we pray now silently or aloud. Among them, we remember Sharon, Barbara, Ron, Lisa, Liz, Ruth, Richard, and for all those for whom we pray and love. We pray for the repose of the souls of the recently departed and for those whose years mind falls this week. Especially Lydia, Frank, Alice, Eleanor, Edward, Marion, and Mary. And for all those we remember now silently or aloud for the departed members of the Guild of All Souls, for the departed sisters and associates of the Holy Nativity, 
for all those who have died in the war in Ukraine and for those who have been victims of violence in our own country, especially victims of mass violence in Alabama, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, and Texas. We especially remember Emma Mae Dempsey and give thanks for the tabernacle light that is given in her memory. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercies of God rest in peace. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseechingly to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers. Michael, our presiding bishop, Nicholas, our diocesan bishop, Kevin and Andrew, our priests, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, Daniel, our governor, and our mayors, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in your mercy. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Please be seated. All right, good morning again. Thank you for joining us. What a wonderful celebration of baptisms. Anybody that says that church is dying is mistaken. The church will always have the faithful, and I'm so excited to have been part of this sacrament today. A few announcements. Uh, join us for a special coffee hour where we will have cake. we have cake at baptisms. So I don't know if we have three cakes, but we might have one. We'll cut in three. I don't know. But we're going to have cake. So join us after Mass next door for coffee and cake and fellowship and conversation as we celebrate MMA, Gabriel Storm, and Alessandra Sage. I love that name, Alessandra. Muy bien. And then Tuesday, Music on the Lawn. Uh, this will be the second week of Music on the Lawn at 6 o'clock. goes right until 8.30 here. We had probably 200 and some odd people here Tuesday night, and it was just a wonderful celebration and joy, and uh, we are looking forward to, to, to this Tuesday as well. Then Wednesday at noon, there will be Mass. We will remember Adelaide Teague Case, who was a teacher in 1948. Come and learn about her and her impact on the church on Wednesday at noon. Thursday morning prayer at 8.30, evening prayer at 5.30, and then next Sunday, big day next Sunday, bring your friends and your neighbors and your enemies. It's going to be good. 
Next Sunday at 9 o'clock, we will celebrate Peter and Harriet Choir Day. Peter and Harriet were the founding lay people of this church and were freed slaves who gave what they had to see a church planted, planted on the point. And they planted and God grew. And we are glad to celebrate them. Next Sunday, though, we have a special organist. Very special organist and a special choir. Mark Johnson and the Peter and Harriet Choir Choir. He thought of that name. I didn't. The Peter and Harriet Choir Choir will be here next Sunday. So that's going to be a wonderful celebration. And after that, we'll have a special brunch. There's going to be ham. There's going to be... What more can you ask for? Ham and cake. Come next Sunday. Have some ham and cake. Lastly, uh, we have been blessed over the last year to have Kelly Burns as our administrative assistant. She has been fantastic and has helped out in so many different areas of church life. And she decided that she needed to have a full-time job. I tried to tell her she didn't need a full-time job, but she didn't listen. She got one anyway. So what does that mean? It's good for her, it's bad for us, but it is good for somebody else because we are looking to hire. If you have skills in Microsoft Word, if you feel like you could do a web-based newsletter and run some social media stuff and keep me going to where I am supposed to go and when, there may be an opportunity for you. (laughs) Uh, We are looking to hire somebody at 20 hours a week uh, real flexible schedule, we can talk about that, but if you or if you know somebody who is looking for a part-time job in a wonderfully joyful environment where we usually have some kind of cake in the refrigerator, um, let me know, and I would love to chat with you about, about an opportunity. I think that's it. That pretty much covers it. All right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
bless us often for your kingdom, for your people, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Because in Jesus Christ our Lord Thou hast received us as Thy sons, and daughters, made us citizens of thy kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising Thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of Thy glory. Glory be to Thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, 
Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we so earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech and lead to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseech and lead that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee. O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. The gifts of God for the people of God. of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.